Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Everdell, a game that is so cute, you almost, but not quite, forget how hyper competitive it can be. What I love in Everdell is how many paths to victory there are, and yet players end up within a few points of each other in general. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In the charming valley of Everdell, you develop a full-fledged city, attracting all sorts of forest critters. You make them thrive and expand over the course of four seasons. When all players have completed autumn, the game ends, and the player with the most points wins the game. To set up the game, you start by building this beautiful ever tree, and then you place it on the stump on the main board here. Then you're gonna place this in the middle of the table. Separate and place the twigs, the resin, the pebbles and the berries along the river like this. Shuffle the forest cards, draw three for a two player game or four cards for three or four player games. Put the remaining cards back in the box. Now we're gonna place the four basic event tiles along the river like this. Shuffle the special event deck and place four cards on the lower branches of the ever tree. Put the others back in the box. Shuffle the main deck and place eight cards face up in the meadow. Place the remaining deck face down inside the ever tree. Now you place the point tokens and occupied tokens near the board. Then each player picks a color and takes two workers in their play area. Each player places its remaining four workers here on the ever tree, one for spring, one for summer, and two for autumn. The most humble player goes first and will draw five cards. The second player will draw six, the third seven and the fourth will draw eight. Then we are ready to start playing. Play proceeds clockwise and each player can take one of three possible actions per turn. It can be one to play a worker, two to play a card or three to prepare for a new season. You place a worker to gather resources, draw more cards, host events or perhaps to embark on a journey. These locations are marked by either a closed circle or an open one. Only one worker can be placed on a closed circle, while many workers can be placed on the open one. So if you want to gather resources, you're going to have to place your worker in one of these actions like this and place the resources in your supply. Note that there's no limit to the amount of resources a player may have during the game. Also, locations marked with this symbol are only used in a four player game. Note that even at four players, you cannot place two workers from the same player on a single forest location. Then there's the location of the Haven, where you can have multiple workers, even of the same color. In the Haven, you may discard any number of cards from your hand and gain one of any resource for every two cards you discard. Each location of the journey shows a cost of cards and the points to score at the end of the game. So here, for five points at the end of the game, you have to discard five cards. Here it would be two or three here. Only one worker can occupy the three, four and five journey location, but you can place several workers along the journey if you have enough cards and several workers can occupy the two location. Another action you can take on your turn is to play one card. You can play a card from your hand or you can play it from the meadow. If you have a choice, take it from the meadow as it gives you an advantage over the other players. To play that card, you must pay immediately the requirements shown on the top left corner of the card. So for that farm here, I need to pay two twigs and one resin and put it back into the supply. On the cards, it also shows the points you will score if you still have the card in your city at the end of the game. There are two main types of cards in this game. You have critters and you have constructions. Critters are animals that always require berries to play. Constructions are buildings which require a combination of twigs, resins, or pebbles. Most constructions have a symbol here. It means they can attract a specific type of critter mentioned here. So if you have that post office in your city, at a subsequent turn, you can play this postal pigeon without paying its cost of two berries. Note that each building can only attract one critter for free. To remember, place this token here. After that, you'll need to pay its cost to play it. So, for instance, with that farm, you can attract the husband or the wife for free. The other one will cost berries unless you have another farm. 
Also, if the critter can be placed for free on a building, it's indicated in its top left corner above the ingredient cost. It can be confusing. So remember, it's the building that attracts the critter, not the other way around. Also, each critter and construction card can be a common or a unique card. This means that you can have multiple copies of any common card in your city, but you may only have one copy of any unique card. Also, to know how many there's of each card, it's written here in very, very, very small. All cards also come in five different categories, which have different effects in the game. In addition to the description here, you can see the type of card through the symbol here. There are five different symbols, each representing a different effect. The green production produces what's indicated here as soon as it's played. Also, since they will produce again when you prepare for spring and for autumn, it's really important to get a few of those in your city as soon as possible. The tan traveler activates only once, immediately when played, so these are also good to play early. Blue prosperity gives bonuses after playing certain types of cards and gives you discounts to play more cards. The Purple Governance grants points and listed bonus points at the end of the game, so it's fine to play those in autumn. Red Destination activates when you place a worker on it. If they have the open symbol, other players can also place their worker on it. Once you play a card, you place it in front of you and that becomes part of your city. You can have a maximum of 15 cards in your city. The rules recommend you organize it in a 5x3, but really you can organize it the way that works best for you. Just keep in mind that some cards do not count against the total of 15, like the Wonderful Wanderer or the Husband and Wife. If you're asked to draw a card, always draw from the deck, unless specifically instructed to draw from the meadow. If a meadow card is played, replace it immediately with a new card from the draw deck. If an ability allows players to draw more than one card from the meadow cards, draw all cards first and then replenish. If the deck ever runs out, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. Also remember that there is a strict hand limit of eight cards. Once you've got eight cards, you can't take anymore. It's not one of those games where you can maybe take some cards, get rid of some in the same turn. You simply cannot take cards. Now let's look at some action spaces that you may have in your city. They would come from the red destination cards or the storehouse. To get the benefit, you may place a worker on a destination card in your city. Another player can also place one of their workers in your city if the location has an open symbol as shown here. If they do, you collect one point token from the supply. Also, if you meet the listed requirements, you can place a worker on one of the basic events or one of the special events to achieve its benefits. If you have the event requirements in your city, like having three travelers or for instance, having the doctor and the postal pigeon, then you may take the event in your city and place a worker on it. Note that some special events have requirements which you would need to pay immediately or actions you need to take immediately, like for these 11 here. All the events you have in your city are scored at the end of the game, not immediately. So that's really great for these four. Finally, the third option as an action during your turn is to pass to a new season. The game starts in late winter, so the first season you're going to prepare for is spring. You perform the prepare for season action when you've placed all your workers, you cannot play any more cards, or you just really feel like it. For each new season, have a look at the top of the ever tree because it'll tell you what to do. In spring, you take the new worker here and activate all green production cards in your city. In summer, you take a new worker here. There's no additional production in summer. However, you may draw up to two meadow cards. In autumn, you take these two workers here and activate all green production cards in your city again. When you perform the prepare for season action, you take back all your deployed workers and that's the end of your turn. Note that players can change season at different times, so it's possible for players to finish the game as well at different times and others to just keep going. That's one of the aspects I really like about this game. And for any remaining players, if they need to give a card, they have to give it to an active player. If there's no other active player left, then they discard the cards. So the game ends when the last player cannot or does not wish to perform an action anymore. That's when we start counting the points. You may find it easiest to add up the base value of each card, then come back and add up point tokens, purple prosperity card bonuses, journey points and events. 
the player who has the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, it will be the player who has achieved the most events. And if they still tie, it's the player with the most leftover resources who wins. Now, my tips to win at Everdell are, so try to focus on resources at the beginning of the game and getting points at the end. Try to get resources from forest locations or playing green and tan cards to get that engine going faster. It's important to stretch your season, so play cards that generate resources immediately. For that same reason, play the historian or the shopkeeper if you have them early in the game. Try to get some really cool combos like the farm, husband and wife. Also with the crane or the innkeeper, try to play some big cards like the architect, the king or the queen with them. Also, the storehouse, chip sweep or the courthouse and judge work well together. Some special events can be very powerful, so take your time at the beginning of the game to read what they do and what they can do for you. The Dungeons, Ruins and University can help you recycle cards you don't need anymore. Also, at the end of the game, the monastery and the monk can be very powerful. So that's how you play Everdale. It's a really fun game for beginners and advanced players. There's a lot of expansions out there and I might cover them in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.